whenever we go camping, we tend to snack a lot. We mindlessly eat <laughs> even more than when we're at home. <laughs> Today, we're gonna talk about 10 things that we mindlessly eat every time we walk past the refrigerator. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we see the sunset. Look at that. You'll be alerted to it. So for the last 36 days, we have been on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And that's it. And that's all we've been eating. A couple of spices here and there. We found some variations for beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, eating a little bit of pork. But what has been eliminated from our diet, and it's one of the reasons to do beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, is to eliminate things, is all the drive-bys. That's what we like to call them. The things that every time you walk past a refrigerator, the things that you pick up just because you want to eat. Not right. because you're hungry, not because there's any real nutrition of it, just because you want to put something into your mouth. Yeah, that's something that we learned while we've been on this challenge is there have been no drive-bys. Yeah, well, there wasn't much to drive by other than some beef or something like that. Yeah. And we didn't really have a whole bunch of that. But there's things that I think that a lot of times that we pick up and we eat, sometimes they don't even have a lot of flavor. Sometimes they have no nutrition. Right. And a lot of the times, they do nothing to satisfy your hunger. They're just chewing and swallowing and tasting stuff. Yep. And the problem is sometimes these things can cause us to get off track. Maybe we overconsume our fat. Maybe, and I think this is the case for myself, we overconsume our carbs because we're not even thinking about it because we are mindlessly eating them. So today we're gonna talk about 10 food items that we realize that we, and possibly you, mindlessly overeat. And we're gonna start off, we're gonna go 10 to one, right? So number 10, hand vegetables. Yes, I am super guilty of this. And I think that this actually goes back to my pre-keto days when you associated things like celery, slices of um, cucumber, those sweet peppers or green bell peppers, yep. even lettuce is just like low calorie. Who just mindlessly eats lettuce to eat lettuce? Really? I have, because it's just, I'm chewing something. It's in my mouth. Okay. I go by the refrigerator. I need something. And when there's nothing, there's usually a little bit of vegetables. And I always would think in the back part of my mind, hey, this can't be doing too much damage because this is a low calorie item. The thing is, it may not be doing too much damage if you're off keto, but it definitely is mindless eating. Yeah. It's definitely not giving you really any benefit, right? Because you can eat a whole bunch of celery. Is that really gonna satisfy your hunger? I know it's not gonna satisfy no. my hunger. No, in fact, I used to find it piqued my hunger. Like, Because now you wanna chew more. This is the appetizer to the real snack. Where's yeah. the snack? It's not time to eat. I know it's not time to eat. Otherwise, I'd be sitting down and eating. So I'm in the drive-by mode. Now, what else is available? And it has me kind of surf for more. And the other problem with doing the drive-by or mindlessly eating the vegetables though it may be low calorie and though it may be vegetables it's going to do two things they all have carbs in them and so you may end up overeating carbs i mean the bottom line is hey listen i love jalapeno peppers every jalapeno pepper has a carb if i'm eating 20 carbs i could easily eat 20 jalapeno peppers and now i have no carbs left for the rest of my food for the day the other thing that they could do is cause you to fill up somewhat 
and then not eat any of your protein. Oh, definitely. I will prioritize because I maybe not be able to like overeat jalapeno peppers just because of the spice, but I can go to town on an entire bag of those red, yellow, like the colored sweet peppers. And those are even higher in carbs yeah. because they do have some natural sugars in them. We just took a bike ride up to our favorite souvenir shop in the Keys, Sandals. And while we were here, we came across number nine and that is meat sticks. The reason why I can just eat this mindlessly is because it doesn't really fill me up. It's enough to start me noshing, but not enough for me to completely fill up. So unless I eat these with a meal, I could eat like 10 of these and still just be in a snacky mood. That brings us to number eight, berries. Yes, and I know this is gonna be a controversial one, but here's the thing about berries. Nobody's satisfied with one serving. Don't tell me that you're going to be okay eating like 10 blueberries. So when we're talking about berries, mostly talk about blueberries and raspberries, but you could throw strawberries in there. But the bottom line is if we have berries in our refrigerator, every time I open that refrigerator, I'm gonna eat two or three. What does that mean? That means I'm going to go over my carbs because there's sugar in the berries. It means they're not serving any purpose to me other than giving me a little bit of flavor and giving me something to nosh on, but it's certainly not gonna fill me up. So my personal opinion, and yours may be different, if you wanna incorporate berries into your keto lifestyle, do it as something that's going to elevate a recipe. Number seven is keto chips and crackers. I don't know about you guys, but I need to have my, say, Quest chips with other food, like a taco bowl or to fill out a meal. Because if I just sit and eat a bag of Quest chips, it doesn't fill me up. And a lot of times a serving of a keto cracker is just not enough for me. And I wind up just eating the entire bag. Number six, keto chocolate chips. Now I know this is something that's gonna bring a lot of flavor and we say, you know, something that we mindlessly eat, you may not think of something that has a lot of flavor, but let's talk about those chocolate chips. We get deceived because it says you can have 30, 30 in a serving, but how big is that serving? It's smaller than one of our little dipping cups. And the problem is if you have this open bag, there's no end to it. No. Every time you go into the kitchen, maybe you open up the counter, let me have a few chocolate chips. And by the end of the day or by the end of the week, you've eaten the entire bag. Now I'm not saying there's anything Let's wrong with having a few keto chocolate chips, but again, I would incorporate these things into our recipes, like our cookies or things like that. And if we want to have a piece of chocolate, have something with a definitive end, like yeah. a half of a Lily's bar or a couple of the Chalk Zero peanut butter cups, but something where, you know, when this package is done, not the whole bag, I'm going to be satisfied because the chocolate chips, they're just never ending because they're one after the other, after the other, after the other. Keto bread, including our favorite PSMF bread. I find myself driving by, opening up our bag of bread and putting some butter on it and eating it. So I need to make sure that I'm using it as a proper conveyance and waiting to eat it with my meals. So now that we've hit the top four, we're gonna get into some controversial ones. So before we get into the rest of this list, do us a favor, head down below, hit that like button on this video. It really does help build the channel, but it also lets us know what kind of videos you guys enjoy seeing. While you're down there, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button, because that's gonna let you be notified every time we upload a new video. So number four, this is a big one, definitely a struggle for both myself and Rachel. That's gonna be nuts. Now I know you're thinking like, what do you mean you can mindlessly eat nuts? There's some benefits to nuts and there are. Nuts are delicious and they are full of fat. So that's definitely going to help you on your keto journey. But here's the thing, they also have carbs. And I don't know about you, I can't eat just one serving. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna just nut after nut after nut after nut and before you know it, I ate an entire bag of macadamia nuts. So for me, nuts are an absolute no-go to have around as a snack and if I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna use it as part of a dish. Maybe make some kind of Thai dish or something like that that I can use some peanuts or something like that. But everybody's different. Maybe you don't have an issue with nuts. Let us know down below in the comments section. That brings us to number three, my old arch nemesis, gum. 
I can chew a pack of gum in a day, no problem at all. Like I will just continue to pop those in. It's not because my breath is so rank. It's just like, it's a boredom eating thing. Yeah. It's definitely a nervous eating thing. If I'm doing a bunch of tasks, I can't stop and eat something every single time I'm doing that. It, and if I'm around people, but you can pop as much gum in yeah. as humanly possible. Now I know you're thinking, well, you're not really mindlessly eating gum because you're not swallowing it. Here's the problem with gum, especially if you can be out of control with it, like Rachel can. Gum is sweetened with xylitol. Yes, xylitol is a sugar alcohol. And so yes, if you want to do the net carb thing, you can deduct xylitol because it is a sugar alcohol. However, xylitol is not zero on the glycemic index. So forget about the whole thing of, you know, the cephalic insulin response and some people may have a slight insulin reaction to something sweet. Everybody is gonna have an insulin reaction to xylitol because it's not zero on the glycemic index. So what does that mean? Every time you are chewing a piece of gum, you are generating insulin. And if you are generating insulin all day long, nonstop, you can't lose weight because you can't lose weight in the presence of insulin. So if you're somebody like Rachel, who just all wants to chew gum all day long, you're gonna have a little bit harder time losing weight. Okay, here's another controversial one. Number two, unflavored pork rinds. They are the rice cakes of the keto community. It's like they don't count. They're just in the background. You can eat as much plain ones as, as you can pop in your mouth. Okay, let's talk about unflavored pork rinds. Does anybody actually like the taste of just plain unflavored pork rinds? Because I don't. I, I want the hot ones. I want the salt and vinegar ones. I want the porking good pizza ones. I don't want plain ones. Yeah, but the plain ones don't count. You can eat as many of the plain <laughs> ones as you can get in your mouth, no problem. And here's the thing about pork rinds. As much as we love them, I can eat a lot of them and certainly more than what they say is a serving. Yeah. No matter how big that bag is, that's a serving to me. And I will just mindlessly eat them. And let's face it, pork rinds, at least for me, they're not filling me up. They're just filling a need for me to actually put something in my mouth. They're crunchy. And that brings us to number one. And this is a biggie, especially for me. It's gonna be controversial. I know people right now are gonna be down below and they're gonna be like, don't touch my cheese. Yes, but especially when it comes to mild cheese like provolone, mozzarella, the string cheese, it's not really giving me an action-packed flavor and I can just eat tons of that stuff. Cheese is a drive-by item for me. We have talked about this before, and it doesn't matter what kind of cheese. It could be shredded cheese, it could be cheese sticks, it could be squares, cheese slices, cubes. the squares, the cubes. If I open the refrigerator and I see it sitting there, I'm going to eat it. So what am I mindlessly eating? Because again, this list was supposed to be mindless things that don't bring you a lot of flavor. I'm not talking about cheese curds, although I have a problem with those as well, but at right. least those are gonna bring me some flavor, some satisfaction. I'm talking about eating things like mozzarella string cheeses, or slices of mozzarella, or putting mozzarella or provolone cheese onto my hoagie or even my hamburger. Yeah. I don't taste it. No, I think it's more important for us to try to keep cheese in an elevated position. I love when we have sharper cheeses, yep. blue cheese. I like the horseradish cheese that we sometimes get. There's buffalo ones that are adding a tremendous amount of flavor. Then the cheese is doing something. Right. But I can mindlessly eat cheese for sure. So if you're talking about having something like our meat layer lasagna, link for that video up here, cheese is awesome. It's part of the recipe. But to just walk by the refrigerator and grab a piece of string cheese, I'm not getting any flavor out of it. It's not benefiting me and it's not satisfying my hunger. Right. So I need to put these things into an area that if I am gonna have a piece of cheese, have it with my meal highlighted or 
have something like a cheese curd with my meal to spotlight, here's an awesome flavor. Yeah, then cheese is getting its full value. Now, since you brought up blue cheese, let's talk about our bonus item. Yes. Because this isn't something that you necessarily mindlessly eat just as you walk past the refrigerator, but it's definitely something that I think we add to our foods and there's really no benefit. And a lot of times it's actually masking what we're eating. Right. And the bonus item is dips and sauces. Now, when you say you can't drive by that, I can absolutely drive by it. I just need to grab a spoon during the drive by. Then I can go in and out of our dip cups, no problem at all. So you're saying that you walk past the refrigerator and grab a spoon of blue cheese dressing. I will absolutely eat blue cheese dressing. And since we've been on this challenge, we've pretty much just used mustard as right. a condiment. Nobody's drive by eating mustard. No one is drive by eating mustard unless you're having like a leg cramp and it's at night and you're my mom. Like <laughs> she is all about the mustard, you know, spoon of mustard. But for the most part, we have used very little mustard even. Right. The only thing we've really been using is our hollandaise sauce or our mayo. Yeah. But again, it, that's to highlight the meal. So when we say dips and sauces, I think a lot of times we just mindlessly use a dip and sauce without even thinking about it. For example, chicken wings. We love buffalo wild wings, and we've already determined that's going to be like the first thing we eat going off of this challenge because it's going to satisfy the whole need for us to check out and see what is going on with us with chicken and spotlight it and it happens to be on buy one get one day i can be guilty of using a chicken wing as a conveyance for blue cheese yes so i'm not tasting the chicken wing it doesn't even matter what the seasoning blend is on it because i'm just using it to scoop out a bunch of blue cheese i think about in the past we would get buffalo wild wings and we meticulously pick out what flavors we're going to get we usually get three or four flavors you know we love the rub ones especially because we don't have to worry about bad oils or anything in them but then we asked for like a six ounce container of blue cheese dressing and we use that for 15 wings a piece why does it matter what flavor wing we're getting? All I'm tasting is blue cheese dressing. And it's the same with some of the burgers and chicken salads and stuff that we've done from the past. I mean, I can just absolutely cover up whatever we're eating with dipping sauce and do I need it? Even ketchup and barbecue sauce, we haven't had it on this challenge. Right. And I find that I enjoy my burgers, I enjoy my ribs even without it. Yeah, so it's not a matter of the sauces are bad it's the mindless eating of it just the pouring of it on top i think about in the past how i could not eat barbecue without barbecue sauce right and now we just use salt pepper and maybe a little bit of garlic as a rub and that highlights the flavor of the beef or the pork instead of rather masking, than it. masking it with a bunch of sauce so that's going to be our list of 10 things plus a bonus that we mindlessly eat or overeat while on the keto lifestyle. Now, we're not saying any of these items are bad no. and that you need to stop eating them. These were just things that we started looking at being on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. What have we eliminated? And were those things that we want to bring back or are those things that, hey, I wasn't using them in the appropriate way and can I bring them back but not overdo them the way I was? Yeah, I definitely think that as we move past B, 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 and E, we're going to incorporate these foods back into our life, but in a, a different manner. Yeah, let us know down in the comment section, are there any other food items, I'm sure this list isn't complete, that you mindlessly eat, things that you put in your mouth on a regular basis, it's not really serving a purpose, you know, you can say maybe it's bringing flavor, but is it satisfying your hunger? Is it making you want to eat more? Is it being detrimental to your journey? Let us know, are there any other things that we missed down below? Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.